Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Now we're going to start digging into the Maggotkin of Nurgle Battle Tome a little bit deeper than we had before. We've had some time now to digest the book, get a bunch of games in, and see how everything performs. So I wanted to revisit the review of all of this, uh, taking it a chunk at a time. Uh, today we're just going to look at the Allegiance abilities and kind of dig through those and see uh, some additional nuggets of value that we might be able to pull out of there based on the experiences we've had so far. So we're going to start with Coalition. Uh, one in four can be Skaven Pestilence, one in four can be Beasts of Chaos, and they gain the Nurgle keyword unless they are Zinch already. And two in four can be Slaves to Darkness. Now, this is all well and good until you realize that there's no other abilities in this book that benefit your coalition. So all of your coalition is just sort of vanilla units on their own. They can't get artifacts. They don't get to do disease. Um, they don't get affected by the cycle of corruption and on and on and on. You know, all of the abilities that are really making Nurgle powerful they're really not being uh, affected by it all. So I think Coalition is really mostly going to be for narrative purposes right now. Um, you know, I could possibly see a place for some Varengard or maybe Archeon if that's uh, what you're into. But I think right now uh, the options that we just have in the Nurgle Battle Tome are really all going to eclipse your Coalition options. Uh, disgustingly resilient. This is one of the most powerful things in the book. All of our Maggotkin units are getting a 5-up ward save. So that's the entire book. And there are some things that get ward saves now that in the previous book did not get ward saves. So that makes this really powerful. Things like the Glotkin are incredibly hard to kill. And you combine that in with all of the healing that is available to you, whether it be through our next ability on Disgustingly Resilient to heal one wound in each of your hero phases, or Heroic Recovery, or if you're running an Emerald Life Swarm, uh, or, you know, in addition, the Locus of Fecundity letting you heal D3 wounds uh, for friendly units within 14 inches of a Great Unclean One, or Horticulus, the Glotkin, or Festus, the Leech Lord. So, overall, this is an incredibly resilient army. It's probably the biggest DPS check in Age of Sigmar right now. It is incredibly hard to get tabled. Only the most powerful armies out there right now can you know actually table Nurgle most other people don't even come close unless you're one of those you know five six seven armies right now that are really overpowered so this is part of like how you build your strategy around in this army it a lot of it is getting in your opponent's way and really sort of just sticking around and letting your opponent slowly try and grind you out as your own attacks back and other abilities and spells and all of those things really go to work on them over time. Because this book isn't really as explosively powerful as other things. Your power really comes in the fact that you're getting a lot of potential damage over time because you're so resilient. Um, so you really are going to be just grinding on your opponent and out damaging them over the course of multiple battle rounds most of the time yeah sometimes you can certainly get uh, some explosive power um, or certainly enough to kill off smaller units or weaker units but when you run into something big you're going to grind on them for a while All right, and our final allegiance ability is diseased. So my initial read on this was basically we're going to have to actually see how this plays 
and kind of decide after we see what it actually looks like on the tabletop. So to just review what this does at the end of the movement phase and, and the end of the combat phase, each enemy unit within three inches of a maggot kin unit gains one disease. Your sixes to hit, whether it be melee or shooting, also add disease and at the beginning of the battle shock phase, you roll a die for each disease token on a unit and every four up the unit suffers a mortal wound and then the disease total is reduced back to one. And then any abilities that can heal can also remove disease tokens. Otherwise, um, unless something heals, they're going to be sticking around with at least one disease on them for the rest of the game. This is surprisingly powerful. And it's damage that you kind of end up not really counting on, and it's just sort of a bonus. Because it being on a four up and you know only on sixes to hit really getting a substantial amount of disease, um your disease is kind of swingy. Uh, there are things that are gonna make it better um, on the cycle of corruption. Uh, there's plus one to disease rolls and the wither stave also does plus one to disease rolls. So, you know, potentially if you get that comboed up, you're doing disease rolls on a two up, which is certainly really powerful. That's going to really throw a lot more damage onto things. But, um, overall, this is definitely a powerful ability. And I think some of it really comes in that fact of, you know, you're reducing the disease to one at the end of each battle shock phase, but that disease doesn't go away. So you have the potential to just keep doing damage over the course of the game. So things that can project disease over a distance become really powerful because you can, you know, with a spell like Gift of Disease, you can throw disease into your opponent's back lines and slowly whittle away at their defensive units or their heroes or whatever and you know you're just slowly doing that chip damage on them to either weaken them for when you swoop wounds in later on or potentially just taking them out on their own so this ability is incredibly strong it is a lot more powerful on the tabletop than it reads on paper it's very very good and it's really something that i think opponents need to watch out for because it's um going to take you by surprise pretty frequently i think all right and then our final bit here is the cycle of corruption so at the start of the game you roll a d6 and that sets where the cycle of corruption begins and then at the beginning of each battle round the cycle ticks forward one space so in spot number one, uh, all Maggotkin heroes gain a four up ward save. So that's moving your disgustingly resilient from a five up to a four up. This makes your heroes incredibly durable. And we need to note here that all of your really big boys, all your Glotkin, your great unclean ones, your um, Maggoth lords, those are already really durable and really valuable in your army. And this is just making them even more durable for one battle round. So I think this is very valuable to you overall. Um, if it's something like first turn, it might not be as valuable, but you'll love getting this on the first turn if your opponent is a heavy shooting army that can really start digging into your back lines. So it'll really protect your heroes pretty effectively. Uh, up second, all units are treated as being within a locus of fecundity, so that means for that battle round, uh, when you heal in your hero phase from the uh, Disgustingly Resilient battle trait, everybody's healing D3 instead of just 1. That is also very valuable. It comes more in handy a bit later in the game. But again, if your opponent is getting the top of the first battle round and they have shooting, uh, this immediately gets you value in the first turn. And with the amount of shooting in the meta right now, you know, it, it's certainly valuable uh, to get early in the game. So, you know, these first two, I don't really care when in the game that I get them. There's a lot of occasions that 
uh, getting them really early in the game can be valuable, and they're definitely extra valuable later on in the game. Uh, number three, the uh, you roll a die equal to the battle round. So if you're in battle round three, you roll three dice. And for each four plus, you gain a contagion point. So that is your summoning points for your army. Now, this is really not that powerful, not that valuable. Like this and number seven are really kind of blanks since your, um, your summoning is really not that powerful in this army. There's some occasions, though, when this is going to just tick you over to be able to summon something valuable in that turn instead of uh, waiting until the next battle round. So it, there can be some value derived from this, but as I said, I think usually it's pretty much just a blank for uh, most situations. Number four. This is where we start coming into the really powerful ones. Non-Nurgle heroes cannot carry out heroic actions or issue the Rally or Inspiring Presence commands. Now, issue Rally or Inspiring Presence, that is not as valuable in this because unit champions can issue that to their own unit. So unless a unit champion is gone or, uh, you know, they want to save that... Um, ability for later on in the turn um there's uh not much value in the second half of this but non-nurgle heroes not being able to carry out heroic actions that is very very powerful that's going to stop your opponent from getting command points it's going to stop heroic recoveries um it'll stop finest hour uh, all very valuable things to be preventing your opponent from doing this is definitely less valuable the earlier in the game that it comes. So you generally are going to want this a little bit later on in the game. But we don't have any ability to manipulate where the cycle of corruption starts. So, or uh, where it currently is. Uh, there is one uh, command trait that lets you move it forward one space once per game. So it really isn't uh, going to be making that big of a difference to you i think there's other command traits that are more valuable so and we'll get that in a future video this is kind of where we're going to leave things today looking at the cycle of corruption uh so number five enemy units without the nurgle keyword are minus one to charge and cannot pile in closer to nurgle units this is really powerful this is adding to the durability of your army this is um, really slowing down enemy charges. Uh, you combine that with um, redeploy, and you suddenly are making it very difficult for your opponent to charge on you. Um, and enemy units not being able to pile in closer to Nurgle units, uh, that's probably one of the only things in this book that's going to affect your coalition um but it's again really quite powerful to prevent pile-ins this is going to reduce the number of attacks that many opponents are going to be able to get in on you so again that's adding to your resiliency overall number six plus one two disease rolls um that's just flat out good that's just going to uh do more mortal wounds to your opponent um just flat out good um it, it there's very few instances where that's bad um it, the sort of trend that we're getting with a lot of these is that they're better later in the game rather than early in the game uh you know, specifically the first battle round if you end up on number six in the first battle round it is a little bit of a blank um, unless you're doing disease to your opponent really quickly if you're like alpha striking or uh, you know casting gift of disease or some other spell into their back lines uh, early on and then number seven this is our other one that's sort of a blank you gain a contagion point for each feculent gnarl maw so usually that's just going to be one um, unless you are uh, 
running uh, befouling host and have two or three. Um, it's certainly something that people have actually been doing, and I know they've actually been pretty successful with it. So um, this can usually just get you one disease. There's sometimes when it's going to get you more than that if you're in a specific situation. Uh, one disease is really, I'm sorry, not disease, contagion points. Uh, one contagion point really not that valuable to you, um, except in those corner case situations where you just need that one more contagion to summon the right thing. So overall, you know, number three and number seven are kind of blanks. They're really not doing much for you because they're just giving you contagion points. And all of your others are very powerful. Uh, they tend to be more powerful later in the game. So the cycle of corruption overall definitely has more value to you as the game goes on. Uh, and there's nothing on here that's really bad. Um, you know, the two that give you contagion points are just weaker than other things. So just sort of overall, I think the allegiance abilities for Nurgle are really, really strong and are basically the thing that's, you know, carrying the army to be way, way more powerful than it looks just on the war scrolls. Um, so that's going to be it for now, guys. I'm going to be going through all of the different segments of the book and taking a deeper dive into everything now that we've got some experience with the Battle Tome and have gotten some tournament results. So uh, look forward to more of these, and I'll talk to you all later.